This video is brought to you by NordVPN. More information on that later in the video. Okay, so today we're gonna to be taking a look at Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 Plus 2, the remake that recently came out. There's some out of bounds content that the developers put in place on purpose, as well as stuff that wasn't on purpose. Like for example, in the Chinatown district in San Francisco, you might notice that these windows look a little bit bare. Well, unlike other areas of Chinatown, if you were to take the camera inside the opposite side of the window, you can see various text and objects mirrored that would normally show the restaurant name and phone number, as well as other Chinese designs and koi fish. Similarly, some Something like this also happens in the mall stage. Now it's somewhat debatable whether or not this was a mistake or an easter egg, as similarly themed creatures also use these TV screens to take on a life of their own, whereas this TV head character with tattoos and a hat is only shown on the opposite side, which doesn't make a lot of sense because if it was a true easter egg, the TV screen's back should be faced to the player. But I was tipped off that it may be related to another YouTuber who is also a fan of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater and uses an avatar that is vaguely similar named Odd Header. Here's a side by side comparison so that you can be the judge. Anyways, here's a zoom out of the school in Miami. Alright, now we're at the main menu and if we take the camera up and over, you can see that the skate park ends pretty quickly and in its place is a whole bunch of untextured geometry or dev textures. And that's awesome, you wouldn't expect to find it so quickly, but yet here we are. And a big reason why this big giant platform exists is for this big black cube. Now what is this cube used for? Well, if you select a stage within this main menu, you might remember that there's a preview of the stage that you're about to select. Taking the camera out and over while you're having a stage selected can show you what that cube is in fact meant for. It houses a giant image of that stage and the camera position gets moved over into this black cube to show it. Okay now despite the fact that I know it's going to get turned into a meme, let's talk about feet. Ugh. No but seriously the reason why we want to talk about feet in this episode is because there's so many different things that happen inside the shoes of all these characters. Let me give you a couple examples. Now gray shirt Tony Hawk has these shoes here and if you take the camera inside, you're gonna see that a lot of his foot is rendered. It goes well past the ankle point, which is pretty surprising. And then for the gray shirt version of Aori, you'll see that her blue shoe, which acts as the outer crust, seems to have a fully modeled black render with inside the shoe. It's so pitch black though, it's hard to tell if it's meant to be a foot or if for some reason the inside of the shoe was rendered and shows up on both sides. But regardless of whether or not it's either of those things doesn't really seem to matter because it's still completely completely uncommon when compared to the rest of the shoes in the game. And then we got Jeff here, and checkered shirt Jeff does in fact have a fully modeled sock. If we bump up the brightness and contrast on this image inside the shoe, you can see that it's a textured sock, which matches the texture of the sock that's on the ankle that's exposed to the player. And now thankfully, outside the subject of feet, we can talk about a different hidden texture on a different part of the body. With Mr. Houston here and his purple sweatshirt, he's rocking all sorts of Nike gear, and if we take the camera inside of his sweatshirt, you can see a texture that would not be able to be seen otherwise, as his sweatshirt will never flap in the wind, and his pants will never drag down low enough for you to see any of this, there is a Nike Pro logo inside of his sweatshirt. Specifically, it's on the top of his pants. And now I want to talk about the game's skyboxes, because unbelievable what you get to see with various different skyboxes that this game seems to have. Right in the very first level of the game, the warehouse, you move the camera away from the actual stage and what you're left with is just a complete view of the sky dome. And what you can see right here is various pieces of the cameraman's equipment. Like on this stage you can see the level, that's the little bit in the middle there, and I've been told that the two things on the sides might be used for white balance. And then that image is used again in a later stage but with less brightness. And then in Roswell, you can see that the photographer went out into this field and you can see his van that he showed up in, parked over by the wooden fence. Once again, you can see a level and it's a different type of level. The whiteboard says Spring Creek Park, Jackson's and the date is September 5th, 2018 at the time of 8.25 AM. It was on a Sunday and it also says underneath Shadow 06. But none of that compares to the bullring stage because the skybox for that has something that's pretty incredible. Not only can you once again see the vehicle of the photographer most likely, but you can also see the silhouette of the photographer. And if we go from 12 o'clock to six o'clock here, you can still see the white balance on the opposite side. But anyways, on the subject of zooming out, let's take a look at Burnside. Now not for the Sky Dome this time, you can take a look at it, it's just a bunch of grass and trees, that's fascinating stuff. But if you look at the center of the stage, you can see that all the rain is just a texture sheet that is on a bend, and the lightning peeking through the clouds is not part of the Sky Dome, it was added in post-production, causing it to be an entity that floats in the sky. 
High above the school here, we have this bipedal plane with the initials MH2019, which may or may not be a reference to Matt Halsam, who was a senior artist at Vicarious Visions, who sadly passed away in 2019. Again, I have no confirmation of that, so I do apologize if that information is inaccurate, but I did feel the correlation was worth mentioning. On a lighter note, why don't we take a look inside of this school and see some artwork that can't be seen by the player. All this artwork is inside of a building that the player can't access and is all over the inside of this classroom. To start with, we have a barn here with a little brown dog on the left. Then we have a little boy and a little girl, a flower with a bee, a series of humans, a princess surrounded by hearts and flowers. Then we go on to the next table and we got a bunch of vegetables about to be thrown into a boiling pot, a robot with a tie, a cute little tiger a bunch of sleeping humans standing up, and for whatever reason, a highly detailed shrimp. Next unique piece of artwork is a series of butterflies, a picture of daddy, I'm assuming. Can't really make out what's going on with their ears though. Anyways, unicorn princess, I believe a farmer and a dog and some bats, a deranged looking giant rabbit holding a little boy's hand, a gnome in the trash, another deranged bunny, possibly a fairy family, a heart man holding a shirt, a bride and a bridesmaid maybe, two houses, a very elated robot, a family unit, another family unit, a little girl playing outside Side. And lastly, a rocket person with children standing on top of a school roof. Staying on that theme of trying to find things that the developers intended for us to find, in various spots throughout the game, there is stuff like graffiti that says you found me, and a lot of that's meant for the player to see. But most of these little green dolls here are completely outside the player's view, and you'd have to be a boundary breaker like yours truly in order to find it. And fun little fact, I got a little bit of insider info here, and I was told what the actual name of these dolls were. Internally, the team called them the Cost Down Kevins, named after one of the artists who was in charge of optimizing in Skylanders. Now let's talk about some various objects stored out of bounds. To start with, this drainage area seemed to have had objects that were supposed to be underneath the water level, but were later stored underneath the map itself. Maybe because it messed with the physics? It's hard to say, but they're all perfectly spaced and they're all intentionally supposed to obviously be in this drainage area because they're nowhere else except for where the water is. Also in this stage behind a building that does not use parallax, you can see completely unfiltered parallax images. And for those of you that don't know what that is, it's essentially fake interiors. You basically make a 360 image and then squeeze it into a box. And the idea is that you can fake elements that can look like there's some depth and the elements in the foreground and background differentiate them. But anyways, here's a ton of them that is crystal clear looking. Also, there's this random dev cube. Now the function of this one is a complete mystery, but this stage doesn't just have dev cubes either. Over here, you can find various plants that are shown in the stage itself, but for whatever reason, there's a couple of these littered under underneath the stage as well. And then if we go back to Chinatown, we have this giant white prism right at the very end of this district. And also pretty close to that, but in the player area, far below the ground is a black platform. Though it's not modeled on all sides, there is one thin side over here that does not seem to have a face. Anyways, here's a zoom out of the San Francisco streets. Anyways, back to the mall, all these cars that are inside the parking garage are really detailed, and it's really surprising just how much detail there is inside of these cabs. I mean, for one thing, the player's not gonna be able to even really see the interior of these cars, but it's a whole nother thing when you can't even get inside of this portion here without clipping through the environment. And what's inside of this little compartment is a crumpled up blanket. I made absolute certain that this wasn't the undercarry just poking through the car or whatever. It's 100% a blanket inside the back of this car. And they're not even in the back of every car, it's just this one as far as I could see. Some other strange oddities too, there's some mannequins in this area that have eyeballs. There appears to be two different types of mannequins. There's the far more common regular mannequin that seems to be an object, while some mannequins appear to be custom characters, sharing features that would only be inside of a human character. Speaking of weird things inside of heads, if we take the camera inside of the alien inside of Roswell, we can see that his tongue was textured incorrectly. For some reason, the tongue seems to have the texture for the teeth, and so as a result, it looks like he has two sets of teeth. <laughs> but Truthfully, it's just his tongue. And also, the bull seems to have glass eyes. Taking the camera inside of its skull can show you that it has an effect on its eyes that you'd never see on any other character in the game, or any other creature for that matter. But by far, the character that takes the cake on this subject is the homeless man on the water tube in Skate Heaven. Now, finding this little Easter egg is not hard at all. It's actually pretty hard to overlook it, but on the inside, his eyes and tongue are untextured, or dev textured, which is something I have never seen before. I've seen some weird eyes on this show. Anyways, I guess while we're 
we're still on the homeless guy, let me show you a couple other things about him. He has a toe sticking out of his boot. So if we take the camera inside of his shoe, we should have added this earlier, but I guess we might as well talk about it now. A couple of his toes are fully modeled. And also when he falls off of the volcano, he goes quite a ways. I'm gonna show you this entire clip here of just how far he drops before he gets warped back to the top of the volcano. And now I just want to take a second to talk about the show's very first sponsor, NordVPN. I chose NordVPN because I've been using it for a while and I understand that the value of it just keeps getting better and better as time seems to be going on. The greatest value of which I feel is that you can change the region of your IP address, which allows you to access website and content that normally your region wouldn't have. This is especially relevant to this day on Netflix, but also as world leaders become more concerned about websites and where they are operated from, the more restrictions they're going to be left with without NordVPN. And that's just what I think is the best reason. But there's also the fact that NordVPN can protect your data while you're traveling in public, whether it be at airports or coffee shops, and also offers data encryption, which allows you to visit those websites anonymously. Like I said, this is a service that I absolutely believe in, and if you want 68% off, just click the link down below for NordVPN.com forward slash boundary break. It'll only be $3.71 a month, plus you get an additional month free. Make sure to use the coupon code boundary break. Okay, let's start talking about various critters. All over Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 plus 2, there are various animals and they're all really small and of course, they're usually running around on your skateboard. So I wanted to stop for a second and show you what these guys look like up close, starting with the rat. Rat's pretty hideous looking, but you know what? I guess that makes sense. I'll be honest, I don't feel like the rat is being represented very well here. They can be kind of cute. I wouldn't personally own one, but whatever. Anyways, moving on. Then we got this bird here, finally, it's not a seagull. As you know on my show, if I show off birds, there tends to be a lot of seagulls. There are seagulls in this game too, but here's one that's a little different. He's got little tiny black eyes and he's got a little bit of a bluish head. And he's got a white underbelly and really detailed talons for some reason. But there's this one bird that's actually a lot less detailed than the one that you just saw earlier. As you can see, this game takes all kinds. And this bird right here is about as primitive as it gets. There's no texture. There's no 3D geometry. It may as well be a paper airplane, but even paper airplanes are more complex than this. Then over on the beach, we have an incredible crash dummy riding the waves while these sharks are chasing after him. And surprisingly, if you take the camera underneath the water level, you can see that the sharks are uh, sort of fully modeled, I guess? Kind of. They look like they were made out of play-doh but all the same there's a lot more to them than i was expecting when i took the camera underneath the water level also by the way the incredible crash dummies also drive the cars in various stages and then in Burnside, there's this little cat that's outside the boundaries and you might be able to catch a glimpse of it. But what's really cool is that this cat runs on a cycle and we could follow the cat all the way through its entire cycle and never lose sight of it, except for the fact that it runs through a wall. And so if you don't have a camera that can break the boundaries, you're not gonna see that it's hanging out in the void. But taking the camera up close to this little cat can show you that frankly is quite hideous. I don't think I've ever seen an uglier cat in my life. And we can't forget about the tiniest creatures that reside in Tony Hawk, the fly freezing the game and then taking the camera all the way up to this really low textured insect and show you that there is quite a bit of detail to these little guys revealing a little bit of shine on their carapace and then we got to take a look at the most dangerous animal in the world man and women well more specifically the human species here we got both genders wrapped we have a overweight gentleman in a hat holding a water tube a little boy holding a water tube a young woman with a ponytail holding a volleyball some dude on a chair somebody sunbathing a gentleman waving to a couple over here and that couple seems to be holding hands there also appears to be a woman sunbathing with a hat on and then there appears to be this gentleman here that's just staring at us in a very dominant pose Anyways, it's time to talk about various knickknacks and uncategorized things that I wanted to share with you guys before we move on to the final act here. One cool thing I noticed is that a lot of the storefront signs seem to share a large texture together. And so if you take the camera behind one storefront sign, you'll probably find another storefront sign upside down just behind it. In the skate park, every single door that's supposed to lead outside, in other words, an exit door, seems to have an extra bit of environment on the opposite side, despite the fact that there is no door that leads on the opposite side. Instead, it seems to be covered up with a different colored texture of the exterior wall. 
Earlier, I showed you a small airplane. Now here's a low poly commercial airplane that seems to have no textures on it. And since we just looked at a low poly plane, let's take a look at some low poly cars too. Feel free to write your best Tesla joke in the comment section down below. Inside of every single alien ship is a panel that has alien writing on the panel. This is meant for the bottom side of the spaceship, but of course, it's something you really can't see without angling the camera down and over and having all the time in the world to look at it. So here you go, take all the time in the world if you so choose. This is a player intended Easter egg here. This is a garden gnome with a severed doll head and a knife behind his back. But I wanted to take the camera behind his back to show you how they handled the knife here. As you can see, it's just kind of like glued to his back. He's not really holding it or anything quite like that. And then there's this secret area in Marseille where it takes you into this underground cavern and inside the cavern is like an unearthed piece of history or something. And the statues along the wall seem to be Tony Hawk himself. I want to show you a close up of his face here just so that you can see for yourself that clearly it was kind of like implanted. It looks like there was a real statue here at one point and then all of a sudden they just swapped in this statue head of Tony Hawk which is really funny to me. Anyways normally you also get teleported out of this area once you start heading towards this bright light. Taking the camera through can just show you what's left that you normally don't get a chance to see. But more importantly this area is nowhere near where you enter from. I can actually give you a frame of reference of where that area entrance is and then where the actual area is on the map. As you're gonna see here we have to take the camera far below the main area's surface level. And once we get far enough down, you can see that the area has to be encased in a prism. So it looks like a giant box. And once we take the camera inside the box, we can then now see the area. Taking the camera out of bounds in this alleyway here can show you a unique texture for FA World Entertainment, as well as a group photo accompanying it. And over to the left of that is Civilware, which is co-owned by Jeff Rowley, which is why his name is featured here as well. And then over on Chopper Drop, if we take the camera all the way over to the very end of this area, there's a unique texture for Tic-Tac-Toe for some reason. Not very easy to see without a special camera. Still a very cool detail nevertheless. Also in the hangar level just outside the secret area appears to be a unused door and outlet. But anyways, I'm going to give you a zoom out of the entire stage and also show you something that is out of bounds yet again. It's a propeller similar to the one that's on the door that leads to the secret area. However, this one doesn't seem to have any sort of purpose, which is really strange. Also, I'm going to let this scene play out and you're going to see the chopper that you can secretly get to smash through the ceiling and where it ends up after it's smashed through. All right, we're gonna finish off this episode with a couple of viewer requests. As always, you can follow me on Twitter if you ever wanna leave a suggestion for an upcoming episode, or even just give me some feedback on what episode you wanna see. I'm totally down for that. But for now, we're gonna be looking at two suggestions that were both for Skate Heaven. The first one here is about this environment that seems to be off in the distance, and the viewer wanted to know what the heck that was. Well, by taking the camera over there, we can see that it's in fact the bonus area that's really, really hard to get to in this version of the game. But what seems to still be visible is the skate parks, the half pipes and what not on the actual platform. Everything else seems to deload with the render distance. And then the other viewer request was for this Mount Rushmore looking object off in the distance. They want to know if it was fully modeled or if it was just a series of textures or a single texture. And the answer to that question is it's a series of textures or the more technical term would be cardboard cutouts. It's just one image, but then it's tripled up here to add a layering effect. You can see the evidence of that by looking behind one foreground cardboard only to see a duplicate image right behind it. And now I want to talk about my favorite discovery in this episode because of how wild it is. Did you know that in every single street lamp that you can find in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 Plus 2, there exists a small world inside of it. If you shove the camera up past the light itself, for some reason behind every single light is a parallax room. So a tiny little person could be living in every single street light. I love game development. Hey, thanks a lot. If you liked the video, maybe you can help me get to 1 million subscribers. Just hit the subscribe button on the page here. We're getting pretty close and it also helps out quite a bit. Thank you so much to Henry for editing this episode. Also, thank you to Franz Buomu for making the universal tool that was used in this episode. There's links to his projects in the video description down below. And of course, if you want to contribute to the goal of having a staff for Boundary Break, you can donate to Patreon. Big thank you to top donator Steven Olsen. And lastly, I have a playlist here. It shows you all the episodes I've ever made. Very easy to figure out which games I've done. But if you're like, hey, I'm a Tony Hawk guy and I just want to watch more Tony Hawk stuff that's kind of like this. My good buddy with a similar show format, A Plus Start, just did a whole bunch of cool glitches for the game. There's a link to his video on the screen right here and also in the video description in case you miss it. And if you do, tell him that she says sent you. For a period of time, I'll even reply to any of those comments that I see there. 
All right, guys. Hopefully, I'll see you next Friday. Bye.